Hello, and welcome to the worship of God at First Baptist Church, Weaverville. We are so glad that you are participating in this worship service with us. From wherever you might be, and at whatever time you are watching this, we believe that the Holy Spirit transcends time and space and geography, so your participation matters, and you are here with us, and we are grateful for that. That you have taken the time out of your day and week to worship the Lord alongside us today. You are a part of this worship service, so we encourage you to participate in new kinds of ways these days. Feel free to comment or like our worship service video. You can type out questions or responses. You can type out some amens if you have them. Or if you have questions you want to follow up and keep a discussion going, then please do send the church a message. We would love to hear from you. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and or our Facebook page so you can regularly participate in our worship services and be blessed by all the different ministries that we are offering these days. Speaking of which, our Zoom schedule for this week uh, remains full of many good things. Sunday mornings at 1030, we invite everyone to gather on Zoom for a time of fellowship, reconnecting, sharing a devotional thought to begin our week. Sunday evenings at 5.30, our women's Bible study has started back, so we celebrate that. All women of the church are welcome to participate. Wednesdays on Zoom, 4 p.m. is our kids' time, 6.30 p.m. is our youth time. So be sure to check the church emails that go out with links and information on how to uh, join in and participate on those Zoom calls, either through your computer, your smartphone, or even a landline, you can call in and be a part. You are important, so everyone, we wanna make sure they are included. Our midweek Bible studies continue to go out on Wednesday afternoons. We just got into Ephesians chapter four as we are reading Paul's letter to the Ephesians. If you don't get our regular church emails, then please do send the message subscribe to info at fbcwbl.org so you get all the information on how to participate. You get encouragements, updates, and prayer concerns as well. In the email that went out on Friday, there was a word about the next future stages of what life might look like for all of us and for our church in particular as we start looking ahead and thinking and making plans for what reopening phases might involve. The deacons and the church staff are working hard to get ready, even though we admit we don't know what the timeline will be. That depends on infection rates, virus spread, all of that kind of stuff. So what we are going to do is make good plans to be ready, and at different points when we feel it's okay and responsible to allow some more people into our building to participate in services like worship, then we will let you know. So be on the lookout for some new information and details. When those changes start to occur, maybe there will be a little larger group that's allowed to be here in person, but that doesn't mean everyone might be able to attend given the crowd size. And certainly many folks might not feel comfortable coming out and sitting in a closed space for an hour with other people, and that's totally okay, definitely understandable. So if you are watching right now, this service will continue. We will continue to broadcast and make our worship services and many other ministries available online, just like this, indefinitely. So you don't have to worry about if you feel comfortable getting out or not, this will continue. And you, like I said, you are important and we wanna make sure everyone can participate. So at some point in the future, we're not sure yet when, but it looks like it might be coming on the horizon. We'll start to transition to some more people inside our physical building while at the same time continuing to broadcast this worship service as well. So be on the lookout for what the rules and guidelines uh, will require at that point. It'll continue to be a little different and a little strange, but we will not stop worshiping God. That's one of the things we will learn in our scripture text today. We will worship continually, so don't worry. For now, for today, 
I just want you to prepare your heart for worship. Look in the description of the video below for our order of service today. You will find links to the two scripture passages that we'll read, links to the hymns that we will sing. So I encourage you to get whatever you might need ready for you to participate in worship, maybe a notepad to jot down some uh, plans or some names, because what I want you to do next when you're ready is to pass the peace of Christ. If there's someone with you in your home or a pet or loved one, share some peace with them. We all desperately need some peace these days. Also make plans to share peace with other folks after you finish watching this worship service. Jot some names down, write some text messages, or make some phone calls to share the peace of Christ around with others. After that, I just want you to still your spirit so that you are ready to worship today. You are ready to experience God's Holy Spirit today. So let us worship the Lord together now.
Good morning. Our Old Testament reading today, Psalm 47. Clap your hands, all your people. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is awesome, a great king over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, who he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of the trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our king, sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth, sing praises with a song. God is king over the nations, God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples gather as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, I'd like to invite all of our children forward for our special children's time. Good morning, children. Uh, this week, we celebrate a special holy day, a special holiday. This past Thursday uh, in the Christian calendar was Ascension Day. And this Sunday, we are celebrating the day that Jesus went back to heaven. So you know that on Easter Sunday, we celebrated the day that Jesus rose from the grave and conquered death. And for 40 days after that, Jesus walked with his disciples and he talked with his disciples and he ate with his disciples and all of his friends and he spent time with them. But after 40 days, Jesus went back to heaven. And so 40 days after Easter each year in church, we celebrate Ascension Day. Um, and that story is told in different places in the Bible. And later on in our service, Pastor Stewart is going to share that story with us from Luke. Uh, but today I'm going to share with you the story from Acts chapter 1. Um, and this is some, uh, the story with some pictures that I thought you might like. So Jesus went back to heaven. Forty days after Jesus rose from the dead, it was time for him to go back to his Father in heaven. He and his disciples climbed up the Mount of Olives. Jesus told them to go to Jerusalem and wait for the Holy Spirit to come and give them power. Then they were to tell other people everywhere all they had seen him do. And while his friends were standing there on top of the hill, Jesus went straight up into heaven in a cloud. The disciples were so surprised and stood looking up in the sky. They had seen Jesus go up into heaven with their very own eyes. Then two angels appeared and said, one day Jesus will come back again, exactly the same way you have just seen him go up into heaven. The disciples went straight back to Jerusalem to wait for the Holy Spirit to come. Then they began to tell people everywhere the good news about Jesus. The Bible tells us that one day Jesus will come back and his kingdom will be on this earth. I believe in Jesus too. The end. Will you pray with me? Loving God, we thank you so much that even though we can't see you um, when we look up in the sky, we know that you are in heaven with God. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit that we can feel you and that you are with us right now, even um, this day. We pray that you will teach us um, to go and to tell people, just like the disciples, all that you have done for us and to give us the courage to tell people all that you have told us and all that we have learned about you. We thank you for your love and we pray that we will have the opportunity to share that love with others. Amen. Now we join our voices together in singing in Christ alone.
Now is the time in worship when we make it a point to give back in recognition of all that God has given us as a way to contribute to the work that God is always doing around us and through our world. And it is so needed now. As I mentioned earlier, it looks like some things are changing in the world and in the country. Some things for the good, some things not so good. Some folks are able to go back to work while other businesses are having to close forever. So the need now has not gone down. The need keeps rising for support, for ministry, and for good work. So I invite you to please contribute to that good work of ministry. It will be a long period of recovery for our community and for our country. We're going to do a lot here in the church to help get the church ready for this new time of having some folks in person that will take a lot of work and support to our facility and our ministries. As more people suffer income loss, we are reaching out and being active in our benevolence ministries. So there are many things that you can support when you give to help our church. In a moment, as you hear the offertory music being played, I encourage you to give or to make plans to give. You can give in what I call our digital offering plate by going to our website and clicking on donate at the top, or you can make plans to support and to give later, either the good work and ministries that we are doing here at First Baptist or other good ministries and charities that are out there. God has been at work in your life, so it is right and good for us to give and work to serve others. May God bless the gifts that we can give today. Time we will pray for the needs that are out there in our families and in our community, in our country, and in our world. I will lead us in a time of guided prayer where I will mention some different issues and needs that are out in our world and invite you to focus your heart and your prayers on each of them. If at any time you would like to uh, take a longer moment to pray and focus on a specific need, then you can pause the video and take as long as you'd like. You can speak aloud or sing, you can shout, cry, or sit in silence with the Spirit as you meditate on what God is doing in our world and how you can be a part of it. So, let us go to the Lord in prayer. O oh God, we give you thanks for another day of life. 
No matter what kind of hardship life brings, may we never stop giving thanks to you. May we never stop noticing your blessings and your gifts to us and in our lives. We take time now to thank you for all of the many resources we have, for the love and support that we have, and for the ways that you have blessed us. We make it a point now to think on and notice all those many blessings that we might not have been aware of. We thank you, O oh God, that your Spirit is moving in the world, and we pray that it is felt so deeply, especially by those who are sick and who are hurting in a time that it is harder more now than ever to experience pain and sickness. We pray for those who are struggling at home and who are homebound and cannot get out. We pray for their strength and the strength of their caregivers and their family. We pray for those who are in the hospital without visitors, without loved ones to check on them in person. We pray for those who are going through treatments and medications, sometimes with difficult side effects. For all of those who are sick or hurting, we take time to pray for them. We pray for those who have lost friends or loved ones during this difficult time. The loss of someone close to us is awful and tragic, and it leaves a hole in our lives where another good soul once was. But to lose someone now during this time when we cannot comfort their family in person, we cannot even grieve by their graveside. We pray for all those who are dealing with fresh grief, raw grief that cannot find closure right now without the good, supportive, comforting practices of hugs and funerals and support. We pray for those who are in grief. We pray for those who have lost jobs and income, who are dealing with the stress of trying to figure out how to meet basic necessities and get by each day. We pray for their livelihood, that you would give them holy strength, O oh God, that they would know that you continue to watch over them and that they are not alone in their struggles. We pray for them in this crisis. We pray for all of us, O oh God, as we deal with the stress of uncertainty, the stress and frustration of routines that have been thrown off. We pray for the sadness and the loss of good schools and teachers and classmates and time with friends. We pray for families who are under extra stress. We pray for them and we pray for ourselves during this time. As we breathe in, let us breathe in the peace of your Holy Spirit. Let us hold it within ourselves. And then may we breathe out so that we would release your peace out into the world and be agents of that peace. May we be filled with your holy peace today, O oh God, so that we might be peacemakers, so that we might give comfort to all those who worry today.
In your holy name we pray. Amen. Our scripture text for today comes from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 24, verses 44 through 53. Hear now the word of the Lord. Jesus said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told his disciples, This is what is written, that Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands, blessed them, and while he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. May God bless the reading of this holy word today. The first chapter of Acts says that after Jesus rose from the dead on Easter, he appeared to his disciples over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. So, that's what we've been doing since Easter too. We've been talking about the kingdom of God here, how we should live in it, how we should grow in it. And we have used the book of 1 Peter as a guide since it says things that maybe Jesus himself might have said during that magical time after he came back from the dead and before he ascended into heaven in our text today. So now here we are, May 24th, and it may be hard to believe since time feels so weird these days. Sometimes a week can feel like a month, and then you look back the past month seems only like a week. But indeed, like Regina said earlier, we are 40 days after Easter here. We've made it. We've tried to keep the Easter spirit alive as best we could, tried to remind ourselves that we are Easter people, resurrection people. 
And to help us here in Weaverville, the cross stood in our churchyard for the whole season after Easter, for Easter tide. And now that we celebrate Jesus' ascension, we have left the cross behind. So we've tried to remember that the resurrected Christ is still alive and is with us after Easter, just as he was with his disciples, but now he's gone. He left. So what do they do? What do we do? Yes, Jesus will come back again someday. We don't know when. It wasn't yesterday. Probably not today. Maybe not tomorrow. We don't know. So what do we do in the meantime? Well, the short answer is we keep working. We do what we're supposed to do. We do what Jesus told us to do. We build up the kingdom of God as his disciples. When you read through the Gospels and look closely at Jesus' conversations with his disciples, you start to notice the running theme throughout is that the disciples just don't get it. They get that Jesus was a wise teacher, so they call him rabbi. And they get that he could perform miracles, which was amazing. But they didn't really understand the whole Son of God will come back from the dead thing. Now granted, that's a big concept to grasp, that we don't always fully comprehend ourselves, even after the fact, so we'll cut them some slack. But you can almost see Jesus rolling his eyes as he talks with his disciples throughout the Gospels when they would ask him specifically what his parable meant. Or when they ask him for directions on how to get to his father's house from here. And he would say, O oh, ye of little faith, do you not understand? It's only after the resurrection that they start to understand. And it's in our text today when they really get it. Partly because Jesus helps them get it. Because verse 45 said that he opened their minds so they can understand the scriptures. No longer close-minded, they go, oh, all those Old Testament prophecies about the person God would send to save us, those were about Jesus. No way. Yes way. He's the one. And the time is now. But notice how Jesus doesn't spend a lot of time resting on his laurels here. First, he confirms his identity and says that it's true. Everything that was written about the Christ is fulfilled in me. But then immediately he says, so that means repentance and forgiveness of sins should be preached in my name to everybody, starting right here where you are. You've seen it. You're witnesses of these things. So you need to go tell people the good news. And God will fill you with holy power to do it. Jesus doesn't stay very long after that, after giving those instructions. He blesses his disciples, and then he ascends up into heaven. So what do they do next? Do they get anxious and freak out because their leader has gone? Do they wander around listless, not knowing what to do? No. They get active. They start worshiping God immediately. And they do what Jesus told them. They start building the kingdom. And they are excited about it. They just had an amazing experience. They saw Jesus taken up into heaven before their eyes. But more than that, their eyes and their minds have been truly opened, so they realize that they just spent the last three years with the Son of God. They got to see the actual Messiah perform miracles and then talk with him after he came back from the dead. That's incredible. No wonder they're excited. They can't help but worship Jesus right there on the spot, and then they go back into town filled with joy, it said. They can't help but go to church continually to praise God after Jesus had ascended. 
Doesn't that sound great? Don't you wish you had that kind of excitement? Continually worshiping God, walking with joy every day? Yes, but how? What's there to be excited about? Not just normally, but especially these days. How can we be filled with joy? Even before this time, I remember back last year, back in what I call normal times, in the long, long ago, before the crisis, I was having a conversation with a local pastor friend of mine, and he was talking about the state of the Christian church in America, and he was bummed out about it. Said that his church was bummed out about it too, because their attendance numbers were a lot lower than they used to be. And that's the case with most Christian churches in America. Less people go to church than they used to. The church isn't as important in society as it was back in the day. And this pastor was saying that his church folks remember the good old days so fondly that they were now depressed about what their church looked like. They were anxious because they had lost not just people, but influence and support and the authority they used to feel. So when he told me that, I said, you know what? Good. Good. That means that we, the Christian church, are ready for God to move, ready to follow the Holy Spirit wherever it goes, instead of just following ourselves, because we are now in a place like Jesus' disciples were in, back in our text. If you keep reading, Acts chapter 1 says that the whole Christian church at that point had about only 120 people in it. That's not too many. They were a tiny group with little to no influence. Nobody was interested in what they had to say. The religious leaders at the time flat out didn't like them. So how did they respond? What did they do when their leader left? They worshipped. They walked with joy. They went to church continually, praising God. So there you go. Those are the rest of the things that we should do since Jesus, our leader, isn't walking around anymore. Remember, the first thing was to do God's work and share the good news of forgiveness. Jesus told us to do in those verses, to build up the kingdom by preaching forgiveness and repentance. Now, if you're saying, uh, I'm not too sure about that, Pastor, I don't think I'm up for the task because of all these excuses I have, then I say, no. Don't think that for a second. It's hogwash because you can build up God's kingdom. You can do all those things. You can certainly praise and worship God because we're doing that right now. And you can also follow Jesus' instruction to preach repentance and the forgiveness of sins. That doesn't mean you have to stand out in a street corner shouting. It doesn't even mean you have to stand behind a pulpit and give a sermon. It can just sound like a conversation over the phone with a friend. Or it can look like a chat with someone you run into outside while you're both wearing masks on the street. It can sound like just telling someone who's not feeling great that mistakes don't have to hold them back because God wants to forgive everything. Just reminding someone that their mistakes don't have to define them and that they can have renewed purpose in life, that they can be something better. That's it. That's what it means. That's what preaching repentance and forgiveness looks and sounds like. Telling another person that their life doesn't have to be stuck, but it can change, that they can change, and that everything can be forgiven. So that's what Jesus said he wants us to help people understand. He will send us the Holy Spirit to give us wisdom and courage and the power to do it. So don't worry if you're ready or not. The Holy Spirit will make sure. And in the meantime, while you're waiting for opportunities, follow the disciples' examples. Worship, walk with joy, and praise God continually. 
That way you'll know that you will be ready for anything. Let us pray. Oh God, we confess that so often we get overwhelmed by all the great excuses that we have in our lives to not share your good news, to not walk with joy, and to not worship continually. So help us to remember that you send out your Holy Spirit. You pour out your Spirit on us to give us power to do things we never thought we could do. And in fact, we couldn't, except for your holy help. So, since your Son is not walking on this earth, it is his church that walks in his place. Help us to follow his example. Help us to follow his instruction. May we share with everyone who needs to hear it that forgiveness is readily available and that renewal and newness and change is always possible through you. In your holy name we pray. Amen. At this point, we respond to the message that God has spoken to us today. One way that we respond is in song. So we'll be singing our hymn of response today, Take My Life, Lead Me, Lord. And if there is another way that you feel led to respond, we encourage you to let the church know we would love to celebrate any decision or commitment or revelation that you have today and this week as you think about those words of conviction and challenge that Jesus gave us today. So let us respond in life, in decision, and in song by singing together, Take My Life, Lead Me, Lord. joining us in worship today. Your participation and your spirit were blessings to this place and to the Lord, and we are thankful for them. Even though we are not in the same building, the Holy Spirit connects us all. So do stay connected these days with good friends and family, and certainly with the church. We would love to know how we can pray for you and support you 
as we walk along together in this strange time. Since it is Sunday, May 24th, tomorrow is Memorial Day, and I know that holidays are kind of strange and different. We don't celebrate them like we normally do these days. But I hope you have a good Memorial Day tomorrow. I want you to remember what Memorial Day is really about. It is about the brave men and women whose lives were lost in their service and protection of ours. We should always honor their memory. Memorial Day isn't about our country, our flag, patriotism. No, it's about people, real people, whose lives were cut short because they were willing to put their lives on the line for us. I remember when I was younger talking to my grandfather who served overseas in World War II, and I said, Granddad, were you a hero during the war? And Granddad said, no. It was the ones who didn't come back. They were the heroes. So we remember them on this Memorial Day. And we add to our list of heroes those who are fighting on our different kinds of front lines now. The nurses, the doctors, the chaplains, and all hospital staff, and all first responders who are literally putting their health at risk by helping and serving us. So we honor them and remember those who have lost their lives as well. It reminds me of the good verse, John 15, 13, greater love hath no one than this, than they would lay down their lives for a friend. And that is true indeed. Remember that wherever you are, you are not alone. You are loved by God and by us. We pray that you stay healthy in body and in spirit. Now may we end our time together by singing together our benediction song.